Hello, my name is Cynthia and welcome to my Floss Tube channel. I'm happy to be here with you today to talk to you about my stitching, about some framing and previous finishes and a new sampler finish that I just got on the wall yesterday. Um, today is Tuesday, April 16th. I'm going to try from here on out to film on the 1st and the 16th so that I can capture my two week stitching rotation, a way to try to hold myself accountable and also to be more regular in my posting on YouTube. But I do thank you for joining me today, for spending time with me and um, for letting me share. So let's get started. I wanted to talk today about um, lace and about how I use that to frugally frame, that's fun and alliterative, um, different projects that I have in the house. I'll show you a previous one and then I'll finish with the new finish that I just put up on my wall yesterday. Um, but I wanted to start with this finish from spring that I haven't shown yet because it's one of my favorites. This is a Prairie Schooler Seasons and it's, or Prairie Seasons and it's spring of course, but I think I changed the colors just a little bit to a little bit of a lighter green. This was kind of brownish, what they wanted in the little garden there. And then um, I changed the water can and the wheelbarrow to be red, just so I have a little bit more that matches the background. This um, finish is fun because it stays just like this all the time and all I have to change out is this. Some of them I put ball fringe on and some of them I put rickrack and I never did finish winter. So I have three of the four, but I wanted to point out this lace here that I use. I like a, a two-sided lace. In other words, it it's even on both sides. It doesn't have just a flat top and a bottom and I love an antique looking lace so I try to put those in a lot of different bows and that was just a previous finish um, it came this color from Target just that brown and I painted it red and then put that red homespun on the diagonal and you don't have to change out anything except for the stitching so that's kind of a fun way to use a neutral bow a um, red to me is a neutral especially in my kitchen so that changes um, whatever I do but what I was going to show you today with lace primarily is a cheat in, and I've shown this before but it bears repeating I think because framing is so expensive um, this used to be out of print but it is no longer um, I don't believe out of print this is blackbird design birds of a feather and it's just such a fun design. I was drawn to it immediately because of the lollipop flowers at the top. They're actually surrounded with a chain stitch embroidery. And um, I think I followed the DMC conversion on this pretty closely. I might have brightened these just a little bit, um, but I can't remember. I think it's Buckeye Scarlet, one of my favorite reds. And so it's very um, vibrant. But what I did in this frame, here, I would have had about two inches or more, I'm not very good with spacing, but at least two inches of dead space, either on the top or the bottom. And as you can see, to the edge, I'm right up to the edge. I believe this is a 11 by 14 frame. Yeah, it says it right there on the back. It's just a really um, grungy old Walmart, or not Walmart, garage sale frame that I picked up, or possibly my mom. It actually says Michael's on it, but it's it's, obviously pretty old <laughs> so I don't know where it came from I can't even remember but I did put some stain over it and distress it I like things to look antique and I put coffee on this sampler after I stitched it which I believe I made a video of probably two or three years ago <laughs> so it is back there if you go into my um, back back in my search but what I did with the lace, to me, it almost looks like part of the stitching. I know it's not, but I like to make it kind of tonally the same. So I did antique that lace. And I think from a distance, it doesn't really strike you as, hey, there's lace on there. It just fills the frame. So instead of having to have a custom frame made, I can use my garage sale Michael's frame. And it's been on my wall for several years. Now it does sag just a little bit. I could probably, um, I didn't want to use glue on it though. I just have it tacked back here with, with um, thread. You can see I lace 
that onto the foam core and then I just tack it in. But um, it's not sagging too noticeably, maybe a little bit there on the bottom. But like I said, it's been two or three years, so I could probably pull that out and tighten it just a little bit, but it doesn't bother me. And I just wanted to put that idea out there as a way to save a lot of money on framing. Um, and I know framing is very expensive. So if it keeps it from being in a box under your bed to being on the wall, then I say go for it. This piece I just finished. And this is the main reason I wanted to film today. The main thing I had to show. This was my heart and hand sampler by Brenda Gervais. It's an older pattern. Still available probably on um, like Farm Girl Dry Goods has a lot of, um, Michelle has a lot of Brenda Gervais patterns that are older. Um, Jen Stitch Niche on Etsy and the Country Stitches online, which is Brenda's website. You can probably find this there as well and, and other retailers too. It's just, I'm not, I don't think it's on 123 Stitch. It's, it's quite a bit older, but I had this frame, if you recall, um, it used to have my grandmother's Amazing Grace piece, which I have right here. I just pulled it out, um, which is really pretty, but I don't really love pink. And my intention, sorry, I'm kind of hiding back here. My intention with this piece, which was some kind of a dimensions kit, not dimensions. Um, well, one of the, right, one of the kits that you get at Hobby Lobby and she did such a good job on it. You can tell this looks like. Ada, but I think it's probably a 16 or 18 count Ada. And you know, you can see all that back stitching, just all the work she did on that. I'm probably going to turn this into a flat fold. I thought about a pillow, but it's, it's got such, um, delicate stitching there with the back stitching. I think I'll make it a flat fold or I might reframe it. I haven't decided, but you can see my grandma's choice. She had this frame. And it's actually got a clearance sticker on the back for $10. So she found it at Hobby Lobby. Yeah, that's a Hobby Lobby tag for $10. And then she had them cut this frame. You can see it's like an inch and a half on the sides and then quite a bit bigger on top and bottom, which is just not my favorite thing. Um, it always kind of bothered me a little bit. Whereas if I put it in here, um, I'm a little bit tight at the top. And then I did my trick with the lace to fill it in. Gosh, it's so big, it's hard to fit in there. But to me, like I said, it just kind of tricks your eye. It's almost like, and I did coffee dye that lace. It came from, oh, I thought I put it in here. It came from Hobby Lobby like two days ago. So I know it's probably pretty standard. It's not, I wish it was cotton. It would have taken the dye better. It's polyester, but I was still able to top stain it. And then I put it on my oven rack on 220 and it has some singe marks from that too, which I liked. It's pretty grungy but it just filled in those sides so that I didn't have no space at the top and then an inch on each side. It's all the way full. I wish I had a little more clearance on top and bottom, but again, the difference with having it under my bed in a box. Okay, sorry, I'm back. My dog is barking at every little bicyclist and walker in my neighborhood as we get into the evening time. Um, but I really like the way it looks overall and it's, it's up on my wall instead of under my bed in a box or put away for who knows how long until I can afford a frame. And this is a beautiful frame. I love the way this um, fabric is 32 count ale. I think the warm gold is really pretty with the golden kind of antique fabric. And one thing I wanted to point out about this, I think the difference um, with this piece, and I don't like it for every piece or not every time, but sometimes I just really like the, the bolder colors. And I know that's personal preference, but on this piece, a lot of times you see it stitched one over two on like 36, and it's gonna be a lot more muted. So doing two threads, I know some people just really hate that, it really is pretty though. It really does show with the colors. They really do pop. So to me, it's worth it. It doesn't bother me that much. I'm not super picky about my stitches lying perfect. I wouldn't use like a laying tool or, but it's not going to the fair. It's just hanging on my wall. So that's just something to think about because um, unless you're doing like a 46 count linen or higher, I would argue, um, you're not going to get this dense a coverage or brightness in your piece unless you use two stitches or two strands. So just something to think about. I do, I will list the colors I use below. I want to say 
I use mostly what Brenda Gervais um, put on the list, except she did not do a DMC conversion. A lot of times she will not. It just had the gentle arts and the, um, I believe it's mostly gentle arts. It might have been a classic color work or two, but I just looked at the picture. Oh, and here's the original. It was done on the bluish gray dove. I just looked at the picture and then I picked a um, floss myself. One of the ones that was a standout to me, um, I thought it turned out really pretty, was the Wicked Stepmother um, Burgundy. And this is supposed to be, I think it was a current, is that how you say that? C-U-R-R-A-N-T from Gentle Arts, which is a really pretty floss. I just had this one already and I wanted it to be kind of a burgundy red for the barn. And this is called Jolene by um, A Wicked Stepmother. So that was kind of a standout color for me. Turned out really pretty. And then I used 3777, which is a terracotta um, color. And in the original chart, um, no, she called for mulberry, not current. It was mulberry and um, another orangey red, just a terracotta, I think but I ended up using 3777, which is a dark terracotta. I, I like to use this for Santa Clauses, believe it or not. That's one of my favorite reds for a Santa. Just kind of a dark, dark terracotta. But um, those together were my berries and they have you know just enough of a contrast. I don't love the green I, I picked. I wish I would have picked a little bit deeper. This is a Victorian Motto, Victorian Motto sampler. If you realize last time I said Victoria's Secret thread. I don't even shop there. I don't know where that came from, but Autumn Hayride is a pretty green, but um, I would have gone with my favorite DMC greens are 3011 and 3012. Those are the closest conversions for um, DMC, or not DMC, Gentle Arts. I think it's in dive or on Dive, however you say that, but um, Blackbird uses that color a lot and it's my favorite green, 3011 and 3012. And I used 3012 for the inner green, but I used that Autumn Hayride and it's not my favorite. It, it turned out okay, but it was kind of one of those, once you get started, I didn't want to rip it out and keep and uh, change it all. So I committed to it, but there's some close ups. I might put a little video of it close up as well. And that was mainly what I wanted to share with you. I'll show you the back. It's not pretty. Um, in fact, I was trying to tighten that lace a little bit and I just ripped the shred, ripped that back, but I just um, lace it like that and then I wrap the lace around the back and stitch it. And then it's not perfect. It could be a little straighter, but I got it as straight as I could. So just wanted to share that tip with you as a way to um, frugally frame, like I said, not to um, get too concerned about things being perfect, but to fill in the space, just at least visually. And definitely I would um, recommend antiquing the lace so that it matches the little. If that was a white, lace border i mean if that's the look you're going for but i think it would make it stand out as hey there's lace on there versus your eye from a distance just looks like the frame is fitting better so there are my lace um frames and i wanted to show you the few projects i've been working on and one pattern that i pulled out to show you and i think that's it so hang on just a second let me get my whips Okay, I fully intended to have this finished and it is very, very close. I'll probably finish it this evening, but I didn't have time to stitch it up. And I have some lace that I wanted to show you kind of in keeping with the theme of finishing with lace or framing with lace. This is the Antique Birds piece by uh, Shakespeare's Peddler. I wouldn't call it a sampler, it's just a little pin pillow. But I am stitching this on 36 count country mocha. It's actually the other side of my Hawker and Hollow. Um, and I have enough to do the cats on the back. So, or on the other uh, half of this linen. So, um, I'm just using a solid blue. I think it was, the example is in black. She, she said you could use whatever color you want, but I really like it in blue. I dyed some corduroy from an old pair of tan corduroy pants at the same time I dyed, um, I don't remember what I dyed, <laughs> it was a while ago. I had this and then um, what I intended to finish it with was this antique um, tablecloth. And I've talked about this before. I know I finished my Marian Librarian with part, the other side of this bullion stitch. And you can see there's lots of stains on here. Um, 
this is in really, really rough shape. I cut it up there, but it was already, you know, shredding like this. It was priced at $3 and I know I got it for $1.50. So my intention though, is to find some piece of this lace and it's very bad damaged, um, in bad shape, but I'm going to put that with the, um, with the, the pin pillow and put it in my bedroom. I also found, I was kind of kicking this idea around as well. I have this one from my mother-in-law. There were a ton of these and, um, I just probably won't ever put that out in my room, you know, in a bedroom or anything. And it has, I think it's blood or something on it. So again, I don't want to waste this hand crocheted lace though that my either my mother-in-law or her mother did. I'm not even sure who. So that also would be pretty, I think, to have that variegated lace. Um, and I know there was an Instagram video, is it Yasmin, Made With Love? She was showing how she crochets to her pillows to make this kind of edging. I mean, just the way that my mother-in-law did it. It's not new, but it was so cool to see her do that in really um, fast motion. I, I cannot crochet. I don't have the good tension. I've never been able to, but I certainly have enough examples around that. I might use that or I might use both. And then the same fabric that was on the back of the other pillows that are in my bedroom. So I will show this to you next time with the lace on there, but always um, try to find reusable things if you find anything at flea marks. I, I just hate to see people's handwork put in a garage sale or in, at the Goodwill. <laughs> so if I can use it, I try to rescue it. And um, this was some examples, even though they're not colors I would use, if you see part of them, you know, for a dollar, I could never buy that at Hobby Lobby for that. So that's another use for lace, especially antique lace. And then I also did some work on my spring Cricut collection that I've shown y'all. Um, it is kind of old and kind of not usually my style, but for whatever reason, it was just really calling to me and it's really fun to stitch. It's just bright and fun. This periwinkle fabric that I dyed, I put in that cloud. I loved that variegated thread from, I think that's a Victorian motto actually. It turned out really pretty though, the way it looks in that cloud. And then I started the umbrella. I actually ran out. Um, this is a caution for my system of putting this on a file um, folder. I didn't have enough green for the R and I was panicking because I couldn't find that um, Victorian motto thread. It's probably been five years that I've had it. And I actually found it in my Mary Needleworker, which I'm gonna, our Mary Mary Needleworker, which I'm gonna pull out again. Um, I had put the whole skein in there. And so I was able, I was gonna have to pull out all of this stitching on the letter R and start over with a different green so that I wouldn't, because when I put any other light green against that, it was very obvious that I had changed colors. So note to self, if you're doing these file folder, um, cards where I just put a little bit of thread, maybe 10 threads on there. Um, make sure you know where your original threads are, or you can replace them. Don't use, you know, a custom thread like I did. That was a very specific soft green. It's not super variegated, but for whatever reason, it was just a shade that I could not match with DMC or with anything else I had. So luckily that problem was solved this afternoon. It took me a couple days to find it though, or I think I could have had that R finished. And I will finish that R before I put it away. I'm not sure I'll show it to you, but I just wanted to have it halfway done this year and then hopefully finish it up next year. It's super, super sweet. I um, also think I'm gonna leave out, there's a berry basket in the middle on this one. And I don't think it really matches as well. It's kind of red. So I think I'm gonna leave that out. I simplified the S as well. It had a hat on it and I took that off. So some of it I might simplify just a little bit so that it's more graphic instead of um, busy. But I, I like the busyness too. So either way is fun. And those are pretty much all I stitched on over the last couple weeks. We had so much going on with um, school. We are doing star testing for my homeschool group. Um, so I'm having to drive the kids to UTA or uh, University of Texas Arlington on the daytime and wait in my car all day. I got some stitching done then, but it was not super um, consistent. And then um, my kids had a Taekwondo belt test and just lots of stuff going on. So we've been super busy, but um, 
I did get one frame that I wanted to show you and a pattern um, that I pulled out. It reminds me of, of um, the lace finishing. This frame I found at Goodwill for $4.49. I'm not sure where it came from originally and someone obviously has altered it. I think what I'm gonna do is paint this different. I know I'm gonna paint it different. I can't decide if I'm gonna do a dark or light finish, but this will fit my Permit Me Not to Stray Adam and Eve piece from Heart String Samplery. So I was really happy to find a $4 frame. I'll have to get a piece of um, mat board that fits in it and lace that when it's done. And I think it's gonna be finished to match my other Adam and Eve. So kind of a creamy white with some antiquing. And it's a little bigger than the others, but it leaves an inch all the way around the entire design. And I really like the way it turned out. So I did pick that up. Goodwill is my favorite place to find finishing stuff. And then um, a couple, gosh, has it been over a year ago, Gigi from the Artsy Housewife shared this pattern with me. And um, I would love to do maybe a small start on that bird. If I finish Antique Birds, I thought about replacing that with, with this here. I'm kind of itching for a new start after all these whips that I'm pulling out. Um, but this is such a beautiful pattern and I could see where you could put a piece of lace in there. I love her kind of collage style which is real um, simpatico with my style, but she's used three different fabrics here. Um, and this isn't a new design. You've probably seen it before, um, 2023. Yeah, so last year Gigi sent that to me. And um, I do want to stitch that, definitely as a thank you to her and just as, I love it, it's so pretty. Her designs are fantastic. And I think she has um, started a Patreon. So I'll try to link the artsy housewife. She has a floss tube. And like I said, she started a new Patreon. Her designs, she just gets better and better. So I wanted to share that. And um, if you are watching this and you have not subscribed, please go and hit that button. That helps me out a lot on my channel. And like I said, when I get to 8,000, the next milestone, I have a ton of patterns that friends have sent that I want to share with y'all. I have some Brenda Gervais, some um, uh, larger samplers, and some Plum Street things to share. So go ahead and subscribe. And, and um, if you have any questions or any comments, leave those down below. Thank you again for watching. As I end all of my videos, this I think is a quicker video. Um, in the book of Psalms, chapter 90, verse 17, it says, May the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands. Take care.